کنفرانس در لندن حفاظت و حقوق ساکنان اشرف محکومیت زندانسازی در لیبرتی می داشت لرد رابین کوربت Chairman Fowl, Lady Corbett, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as always, it's an honour to be among friends, friends of Iran, freedom fight, and also of those wonderful people in Ashraf. I'm proud to be with such a distinguished panel of scholars on the subject, and on the subject, of course, of utmost concern to all of us. We speak about the rights of the people of Ashraf and the rights of the people of Iran. The right to be free, to live free and to be able to express freely without fear of pers persecution what we believe in. But before I start, I just want to pay my own tribute to the champion of this cause, our beloved Chairman Robin, the Lord Cobb of Castle Vale. I knew Robin for most of my political life and it's not a short one. I am proud to stand here to say he was my mentor, he was my political colleague, but above all he was my friend a true and good friend. As so many of you know, Robin Sisi spoke out against the perpetrators of the injustice against the brave people of Ashraf. But today, as Val so aptly said at the beginning of this gathering, today we can make a pledge. This afternoon we can take Robin's legacy that he gave us and we can renew our determination to resist those in need in Iran and particularly the residents of Ashraf. And as Val has said, his spirit will be with us all the way. Robin will always be there watching what we're doing and give us encouragement because I happen to have a belief and I believe that he will be there watching what we're up to. I say I'm proud to be here. And we can say to the people of Ashraf, without any flummoxy words, you are not only a symbol for your own people, You're a beacon not just for Iran, but also for the people all over the world who seek justice. And in my view, you represent the, the people that have respect for humanity. The cause of protecting you and the humanitarian values that you represent is a great cause. And as I say, as always, I'm proud to be part of it. And as we stand here today... As we're here today, and we talk about the issue of Iran and how to deal with a regime that is brutal to its own people, arrogant and subversive with respect to its neighbours, it is shown over the years, and don't we know it, its total disregard for international standards of decency. The issue of Iran and how to deal with its evil and disgusting ruling regime is a problem for the free world. The problem should be in the minds of every decision maker in democratic country, governments throughout the world. The world is rap rapidly polarising. Those who oppose democratic values are coming together. Russia and China have backed Syria recently and its main ally, the re Iranian regime. The Syrian uprising has taken a new course. Bashar Assad, with the rounds back in, is refusing to accept the will of the people and pack up and go. 
We know that Iran is back in the brutal Syrian crackdown because the mullahs know, they know full well, that the storm will eventually reach them from Syria across Iraq and into Iran and remove them from their place. Friends, the events of the past year have proved once more that no dictator can last forever. It's unfortunate these sorts of people are the last to learn from democracy and from history. They always think they're different, that they can overcome the will of the people. Well, we've got news for them and for all like them. The time will come when you will have to go whether you like it or not. And from this afternoon, let's say, let that time be quicker, sooner rather than later. However, however hard the brutal regimes try to circumvent this process and the most effective method so far has been used by Iran, the spread of misinformation. The tyrants want to wear us out. They want to make it so difficult for the truth to unveil that people get tired and give up. They have constantly lied to the international community. That is the purpose of the misinformation campaign of the regime and its propaganda machine. That we've witnessed it for so long, haven't we? The liars that come out week after week, year after year. Unfortunately, friends, there are people out there who would do anything for money. Some of the reports that have been circulating quite lately, quite recently, contain references to anonymous officials who are of that kind. But the truth will always come out. The truth is that all these allegations are fabricated by a brutal regime to demonise its opposition, as we've seen this happen quite often. Even in Syria, you see, Syria, you see that Assad Jr. is blaming terrorists for the popular uprising. We know that the terrorist designation of the PMOI was an Iranian regime plot that the West fell for and cooperated in the hope of engagement. Thanks to brave people like Robin Corbett, the courts of justice here destroyed the myths in the UK and in Europe. And when you look at those pictures... <laughs> and when you see those pictures that begin this meeting with Robin coming out of the special court, the um, appeal courts, and when you saw him come out for the European courts, and you knew that truth had emerged as victorious... You knew then, and you know now, that you're right and they're wrong. This has to be acknowledged. I know... I think we all understand and appreciate the simple fact that the policy of engagement of Iran has not succeeded. This has to be acknowledged. The world has got to understand. It doesn't, it doesn't bear any resemblance with the, the facts that you can talk to these people. They're brutal and arrogant, and they are despotic in everything they do. And I've got a little message for both my dear friends, my new friend David, General David, and uh, Wes, who we've met before. We had to fight into the courts of this country, and I think it's about time the American people started thinking about Hillary Clinton. On our television last night, Hillary Clinton is talking about the Syrian people, and, you know, it's not good enough. Syria wouldn't be doing what it's doing today if they hadn't acquiesced to the mullahs in Iran. Can, in, can, anybody, can anybody rightly say that things are better today than they were a few years ago after all this talk of appeasement? Absolute nonsense. The answers are resounding no. It's got much worse. Those who believe that the PMOI designation would bring about a more moderate Iran have proven wrong. Wrong on nuclear programs, wrong on meddling in the affairs of other countries, wrong in the suppressions of rights of people of Iran, and it's time for that designation to be ended. Ended once and for all in the free world. It's illegal, it's immoral, and worst of all, it's providing justification for slaughter of innocent people. It has to end, not tomorrow, not next week, but now. Governments have got to wake up. If they don't face up to what's happening in Tehran and by its puppet in Iraq, the world is heading for a greater disaster than it's seen for a long, long time. We know that Nouri al maliki is using this unjust and illegal excuse. And I say illegal because 22 courts all over the world have said so. And our own Chief Justice called it perverse, to, as Jeffrey Robbins just said, to label these people terrorists. 
So let's see how the situation is in Iraq. In a recent letter to Iranian officials, now, thank God we get information that's, that's proven to be correct. We had how the situation is. You would see that the Iranian resistance attained a document from inside the Islamic Revolutionary Guards, the IRGC. And it says, following the transfer of the first group of Ashraf residents to Camp Liberty, and that's the last time I'll call it Camp Liberty, because I'm going to, from now on, call it Camp Concentration yeah. Liberty. So that's what it is. <laughs> but fo but following the transfer of the first group of residents to the concentration camp, the Iraqi Prime Minister has reassured the Quds Force and the regime's ambassador in Baghdad that members of the PMI will be crippled in liberty and will become politically dead. In this document, it is also revealed that we, that's the Iraqi government, have told the United Nations and the international community that the Iraqi government does not recognise members of the PMI as political or humanitarian refugees. But why? I'd say the US government, by refusing to obey the court order, and delist the PMOI has given the Iraqis this excuse. Based on this unjustified excuse, we also know that at least 47 people were killed. Twelve more died because of the medical siege, and more than a thousand injured. So the American government must realise, and of course ours, it's all very well for Haig to get up and talk about Syria. Let's bring him back to Earth down here and say what he could be doing to assist the uh, people of Ashraf. So the American government, they've got their responsibility to recognise the truth. And we've got to expose that by dragging their feet as they are, they are and not ending the prescription, they're causing death and destruction. It's past the time when the United States and other nations acted rather than prolong the sufferings. The document I refer to, Chairman, makes the intentions of the Iraqi regime very transparent. And I quote, We, as the government of Iraq, shall impose our own conditions and we want PMOI members to give in to these conditions at the end. On many occasions, the United Nations justifies Iraq's conditions and calls on PMOI members to acquiesce, since Camp Concentration Liberty is just a transition station where residents there should be short term. According to the document, the government of Iraq complains that, again I quote, not all members in the United Nations mission for Iraq are not in full accord with GOI, government of Iraq, and says, nevertheless, Kobler, we've heard about him. You know, I, when I recently spoke in the House of Parliament, as a cockney, I think we ought to talk about cobblers, about Kobler, <laughs> in particular supports GOI's demands. We believe he does not want to have any dispute with the GOI and is not willing to strain his relations with Iraq for the sake of the PMOI. Colleagues, it's deeply regrettable that some parties in UNAMI are cooperating with this repressive and illegal plan of relocating Ashraf residents to the concentration camp under such harsh conditions. Mr Kobler has promised that their stay in liberty will be short. While I emphasise that I disagree fundamentally with relocating the residents of Ashraf to liberty, in any case, I call on UNCHCR, we went to see them, didn't we, Chairman? UNCHCR, for all the good it did, to start the interviews immediately in Ashraf. I turn to our government and ask Foreign Secretary Hay to take the lead in Europe and welcome those courageous people to England. We should announce our preparedness to take and, and welcome in a good share of those people, they're brave people, and I call on my government from the conference today to do so, and I expect from every one of you in this meeting to take up this issue with your MP and press the government to act quickly, because time is running short. My message to you all today at this gathering and to the courageous residents of Ashraf, we will not rest until all your rights are respected and you are in a free land, free from oppression and, free, and be free from the government of Iraq, who seems to be a major player now. In conclusion, I'd like to say something to Madam Maram Rajavi and to the residents of Ashraf. It is something you already know. You know because you are living it. I simply want to stress that you have something that is more important than anything else, is that you represent a strong moral and just course. The forces of history and of human development are on your side. Those forces favour democracy. They favour freedom. The forces of history and human development are those who advocate, are on the side of those who advocate freedom and democracy, as dear Robin tirelessly did. I pledge to do whatever I can to help. 
You have a tremendous group of allies here in the United Kingdom and all over the planet. In the United States, in Europe, in the Middle East and in Iraq as well. And now it's up to all of us to turn from talk to action. But that's what's needed to be done. And with God's will, inshallah, we will be successful. Thank you.